Julius heard all the slander. He heard all the naysayers, all the fans wanted him out of here. The spinning jokes. No handle, Randall. He heard all of it. Past four games. Make no mistake, Julius Randall has put the team on his back. And he heard the fans. He and heard. once again, did that tonight with a triple-double, J. Ellis. 28 points. 12 boards. 11 dimes. Knicks beat the Cavs. Yes. The juggernaut Cavs. 95 to 85. Win streak snapped. But the Knicks are on their own winning streak. So we got to hit the music, JLs. Got to hit the damn music. We got to hit the music. <laughs> Let's go, CP. Hit Triple the double for the Julius Randle. Put some respect on his name. It's a good day. It's a good day, bro. <laughs> it's a good day. Give, give me some thoughts. On Julius' performance tonight, bro. Listen, man. Julius is doing it all. No handle Randall. Suddenly has the handle. Well, maybe he had nine turnovers tonight, but that's the side of the point. He almost had a quarter to double. But yeah. he still did everything else. He scored. He assisted. He rebounded. And crucial part of the game, first quarter, it, it was a battle royale. Andre Drummond, Julius Randall was going back and forth. Andre Drummond went to the bench. Julius Randall stayed on the court. And that's when the Knicks kind of extended the lead. And we never looked back from then. And you can tell he was tired. He played 44 minutes on the night. Yeah, 44 minutes. <laughs> only eight people really played. Everybody else only played 16 minutes. But shout out to Julius Randle, who's really turning his game around, making non-believers believers. Randle gang is now in effect. Randle Hive <laughs> has emerged. And Ash, you know, it, 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 it's been a different Julius this year, man. It's, it's yeah. been a different Julius. He, he's been a playmaker. He's making winning plays career highs and assists, you know, early, early season so far, but career highs and assists seems to be making all the right plays. What, what have you thought of Julius tonight and, and so far this season? Well, I remember when I was on the show last, before the season even started, we talked about Julius Randle and Obi Toppin and what that was going to mean for him. And I said, sometimes it takes some competition in the building to light a fire under you to get the Julius Randle that we thought we were going to get last season. And here he is. I mean, this is what we've been waiting for as Knicks fans. So it's definitely going to make what happens with Julius Randle in the future interesting. But I'm enjoying it while it's here. I think that it's a Julius Randle, like I said, that we've been waiting to see. And I know that now a lot of Knicks fans, including myself, are going to expect this type of production from him more often, yeah. knowing that he's capable of it. Shout out to him for his first triple-double as a Nick. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. And um, I need to see more of it from Julius Randle. And I know he's capable of it. And if he wants to be a Nick in the future... He's got to keep doing what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, JL, is, he's he's now catching the splash, brother Juju. We went from RJ to Alfred. Now Julius, 4 for 4 from downtown. 9 of 16 on the night. Um, they're running the offense through him, Jay Ellis. They're running the offense through him. As I said, career highs going into this game in dimes at 6.3. Um, doubled his assist percentage so far going into this game. And he was coming into this game, he was second in total passes, period. So a, this is a new Randall, man. This this is definitely a new Julius, bro. Yeah, man. Good stuff from Julius. It's surprising because you know what? All season long, all off season CP, we were looking at all these stretch fours. Oh, who we are we going to bring back? Marcus Morris? Are we going to sign Bert Hans? Yeah. All of a sudden, Julius Randall is our stretch four. He's giving RJ the room that we need, and he's doing everything we wanted him to do last year, man. Shout out to the coach Tom Thibodeau, Kenny Payne, and those guys. Yeah. They really did a good job with this team with Julius Randall and just getting everybody focused. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but he's also facilitating, you know, and and at times better than the guards. You know, when the Cavs went to the went to the zone early in the first quarter, you saw him. He was knocking down threes. He was playing the middles well. He found Nerlens in the dunker spot. You know, got Nerlens going. So he, he's doing a little bit of everything to to um get them going. And the funniest part was in that pivotal stretch in the fourth, the game kind of lagged like through the third and the fourth quarter. They they were trying to give the game to the Cavs. Let's be honest. I mean, twenty yeah. something turnovers. <laughs> a, a good team would have watched them, but the, but this is the Cavs. So uh, they did what they needed to do. But I thought there was a pivotal stretch in the game where um he he hits a three. Yeah, comes back down, does the spin move, and I'm getting ready to cringe, <laughs> but he gets it off of the double team, finds Alfred in the corner for three, and then in the next play, Alfred finds Mitch for a slam. So you know the the two goats, 
that fans were trying to drive out of here, you know, between last year to now in Julius and Peyton, they led the team to a win tonight. You got to give credit where it's due, bro. Yeah, man, especially Alfred Payton. I'm not going to lie. First half of that game, I was ready to play Frank and Lukina 48. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie, bro. The, the, the turnovers <laughs> in the first quarter were crazy. <laughs> yeah, four turnovers in the first quarter. He was – he was – He was Elf. He was Elfred, right? <laughs> he was Working every floater. He was Elfin. He was Elfin up the place, and I wanted to put him back on the shelf. But <laughs> second half, he turned it around, hit some key three-pointers, 50% from three on the night. Uh I got a hand to him. He, he gritted it out the wing, got the rebounds, got the assists. We got some lobs to Mitch. We haven't seen that yeah. inconsistently. Mitch got in a while. activated in the fourth, bro. Yeah, yeah. So kudos to, to Elk. The veteran leadership pulled through after I was ready to, to, to ship him to back to New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> facts, facts. Um, Ash, you know, the, an, another story uh, t- of tonight was Burks. You know, no Alec Burks. And past three games, he's coming off. The bench giving us a lift offensively, showing his versatility, running some point, you know, shooting off the dribble, shooting off the screens, and really just being a spark off the bench. So the story was going to be where the production was going to come from. Yeah. Um, tonight, you saw Bullock stepped his game up. Frank sure. and Kev did what they had to do. You know, not not a crazy game, but they held it down. Tibbs only went eight, eight deep tonight. So uh, what what'd you think of those guys in those reserve minutes? I think, you know, that's credit to Tibbs, though, and this is the type of coaching that the Knicks have been looking for, someone who's able to adjust and doesn't crumble under the pressure or crumble under players not being able to play or produce that game, that week, whatever the situation may be. And Tibbs seems to be able to adjust perfectly, which is what we need. And when your leader doesn't falter, the team doesn't falter. And when your leader trusts the players that he does have on the court that day, that night, whatever it may be, yep. your players then trust the process as well. So it's a very symbiotic relationship. And I think we're really starting to see it. There's a lot of continuity on the court today. I was very impressed with, you know, transition defense, transition offense. I mean, they just look great. The ball movement was exceptional tonight. Yep. And something that that is something Tibbs really believes in. You know, he has a saying, you know, trust the pass. They mentioned that during the game and it's something that he preaches a lot and he makes sure that the team practices often in practice and things like that. So you're really starting to see that come into fruition and you you can only go up from here. Obviously, there are going to be games where we get blown out. There are going to be games that don't look so great. And like you said, we tried everything in our power to give this game to the Cavs. It didn't work. If we were playing another team. You know, a team that was a little bit better, it may not have turned out the way that it turned out. But nonetheless, we got that win. And I just think, again, this is credit to Tibbs, and this is the type of coaching that we've been looking for. Somebody who can adjust when we need to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. Uh, Agreed, agreed. And, you know, he's trusting these guys to step up in a big spot. He had a lot of good things to say about Reggie Bullock, um, his defense, number one. And, um, you know, Frank and Kev, like I said, they stepped up when we needed it. Uh, JL, you know, Bullock, 17 points, bro. 17 points. uh, Five and nine from downtown. This is who you brought in here, you know, off of mm-hmm. free agency. I mean, they got lucky in that the deal was a lot cheaper than they anticipated because of the injury. But this is the Reggie Bullock that you needed to come in here, uh, give the offense some spacing, play some defense, and knock down the open three when it was there. Yeah, man. We went back to the Detroit Piston version of Reggie Bullock. That's the one we needed. That's the one we signed. Shot 55% from three. Filled in the shoes for Alec Burks. Kind of, sort of, a little bit. You yeah. know, it, it, it made it more palatable that Alec Burks wasn't here. Mm-hmm. Um, man, if, if we had this Reggie Bullock every game, I'd be more okay with having Alec Burks just come off the bench. Yeah. I'm just to provide, you know, a, a scoring punch for that second unit. Hopefully, he'll be able to keep this up. Um, just, just kudos to Reggie Bullock, man. What more can you ask for? A three and D. Showed his, showed his ass a bit. Yeah, yeah. And Ashley was mentioning the, the ball movement. You know, ball movement's been crispy. Last yeah. year, especially the off-ball movement, you know, moving without the ball. I mean, last mm-hmm. year, they were um, 26th in cutting frequency and finished 24th in points per game. This year, in the early stretch, they're 15th in frequency, 20th in points per per game so a little bit of improvement but you know you definitely see them moving a lot with, without the ball so um they look pretty good bro yeah i feel like if they play more people that uh that average might be more <laughs> yeah <laughs> by the third quarter fourth quarter of cutting you get a little tired you saw a lot of iso ball and double thing and passing out towards third and fourth quarter because you know that, that takes your window away yeah yeah now they, they definitely started to wear it down a little bit but um again to ashley's point i, I think you know the defense has been solid. 
The defense yeah, has been super solid, solid overall. Interior defense, I think, has been great. Um, they they gave him a lot of open threes, but but give credit the Cavs didn't knock him down. Cavs were actually first in the league in, in the early campaign in, in three point shooting accuracy. So Knicks kind of lucked out there, and that the Cavs didn't hit a lot of the open ones that they gave him. But I thought uh, you know the Knicks play uh, an aggressive, no middles, you know, no paint defense, and, and try to limit Drummond there. And I think they they did fairly well there tonight. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I think it's important to notice also the way the Knicks continue to fight. And I think that's kind of been a trend in all of the games is they'll falter. You kind of see them get back into their old ways. Tibbs readjust. Then they get back on the court. They continue to fight. They go ahead and they spread that gap a little bit more. They kind of falter back into their own ways. But what you can see in that pattern is at least a direction of directions being headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So you see them kind of going back to their old ways, taking two steps back and then two steps forward, two, three steps back, four steps forward. And that's what you really need in a coach is somebody who's going to knock down those bad habits little by little, replace them with good habits. And we're really starting to see that in all of these games little by little. And I'm excited to see where this team is going to be in a month from now, two months from now. Again, nobody's expecting us to go all of the way. We're not going to win the finals. It's not going to be a championship. The P year. word, the, the P word is floating through the <laughs> chat, man. We told them be easy with the I'm P word. I'm not going to say the P word. I'm not going to say the P word, but I will say is that I'm really excited to see where this team is headed. And I really like what Tibbs is doing. And I really think, and I'm hoping that this is the coach that we've been waiting for. And like I said, in the last show that I was on, we need continuity. It is all about building patterns. It is all about heading in the right direction, stopping that revolving door, whether it's with players, with coaching, with front office or personnel. It's about developing some continuity and having a foundation to this team that we can start building on because we are one player away, that one superstar away. We need to build a team that people want to start coming to. I mean, it's the yeah. mecca of basketball. This is the New York Gotta Knicks. Put some respect on people have always wanted. Back. People have always wanted to play here. Now it's time to start getting people to come back. It's about that time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say a plea word. I'm gonna say a p word. <laughs> Lay in. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> play it right. You want that ten seed? Exactly. Oh, man. Exactly. Yeah. yeah crazy. Let's get to man. that play in, baby. Let's go. I'm ready for that. <laughs> let's um, let's go to the phones. Let's hear from our guy from Uncut Gems. JL is Benji in the building. Benji, how you feeling? Man. <laughs> What's good, bro? How you feeling? I got a. I'm, I'm feeling loose tonight, man. Uh, <laughs> definitely got to give props to uh, Ron. Love his love his calls, but another another big time win. Another uh, indication of Thibodeau uh, really making us a mentally strong, uh, you know, team. A lot of great performances. I want to focus on Noel and Bullock tonight because I think those guys came through big. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bullock with five threes, timely shots. Noel with, uh, I think, three blocks, two steals, seven rebounds in 16 minutes. I called in on Saturday and mentioned that Noel was kind of subpar through three games, mm -hmm. and uh, he really stepped it up tonight and made an impact in a short short period of time. Um, just loving the ball movement, man. Um, despite Randall's nine turnovers, he almost had a tenth one down the stretch. Um, uh, that was Peyton's turnover. That would have been a quadruple uh, double, but... Uh, I think just generally speaking, you know, like I like I called in uh, on Saturday, Randall shot 28% from three last year. I think he's nine for 13 so far this year. Uh, That's what we needed, man. i to keep that yeah. up, but um, there's a lot to like. Um, mentally tough. I think this is a game in previous years that we would have lost. Um, folded towards the end as that lead got to, you know, slipped down to five, seven after being, you know, double digits in the fourth. So got to cut down the turnovers. Um, I think RJ, um, you know, another kind of inconsistent, sloppy performance from him. So yeah. we got to get him straight. But um, we got help on the way with uh, hopefully <laughs> IQ and uh, Rivers will be back Thursday. OB hopefully back uh, in a few weeks. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard anything about, about quickly other than he's day to day. No, just but day to day. It would be great to see uh, IQ and Frank on the floor um, just for that kind of energy with Frank with the defense and mm -hmm. IQ with the. Uh, you know, ball movement and shooting. Yeah. I'll let you guys go, but uh, thanks again. Appreciate Great it, show. Let's keep it going. I think the last time we were 22, last time we were 500 was, was five years ago under Derek Fisher <laughs> when we were 22 and 22. Um, so it's a breath of fresh air. Let's keep it going. Nick's all day. Let's get it. Much love, guys. Take Benji, care appreciate tonight. it, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, New Orleans had a bounce back game off the bench. New Orleans played pretty well. You know, he was, he was getting thrown around a little bit. 
past couple of games, man. I think the last time they played the Cavs, uh, Drummond was kind of throwing them around. So New Orleans definitely stepped up. Um, Bullock, like we said, definitely had a good game. Yeah, you know, RJ was a struggle. RJ <laughs> was <laughs> my yeah, heart. To say, to yeah. say you the know least. that hurts my heart. <laughs> to say the least, <laughs> this is our guy. But you know, we we call yeah, it like yeah. we see it. And and you know, RJ struggled, man. Um, Ash, I'll go with you first. What do you think about RJ's game tonight? Listen, RJ is not making my RJ for MVP <laughs> elect candidacy easy nice. for me right now. But what I want to see from him, we were talking about this off camera, is I want to see him develop his three-point shot. And while he's, you know, in that transition of developing it, do what you do well, and that's attack the rim. Maybe get an intermediate shot, something that's not so long range. But mm -hmm. don't rush a three-point shot. Don't be afraid to pass that rock if you can't make the shot. I'd rather see a possession result in a point then results in you know a turnover mm -hmm. or not a good possession i just rather him do what he knows how to do and that's attack him you see when he attacks that rim it's usually always successful as you're developing your long range shot as you're developing that three-point shot it's okay to do what you know how to do it's okay to pass that ball he's got to stop forcing something that's not there yet and he's just got to let it come to him yeah jails what about you man I, I agree with him, man. I wasn't feeling step back RJ today, man. I really yeah. wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I knew some of those things, shots had to do with the shot clock running down. But I agree with you, man. He seemed really poised to take the next step in the preseason. And he's he's faltering a little bit in the offseason. You know, granted, we've seen some tough defensive teams. But today, when there was no Alec Burks and, and Randall went to the bench, I was hoping RJ would be the guy to kind of step up and put the team on his back. And it didn't exactly happen, but we still got to wait to win. It's still his second season. I'm hoping he still turn around. He goes back to the gym, works on his game, watch some film, and get a little bit better. Uh, yeah. I think I think he's a hard worker, so I'm still rooting for RJ. I still think he'll turn it around eventually. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny because the last the the caller um, last show, I kind of called in and say and asked like, you know, um, what can he do when he's in isolation? And you kind of saw tonight again that. And when he's trying to bully ball a little too much, sometimes he's just not going to body a guy. You know, he's got this is the NBA. Like, guys are not just going to let you, you know, bully past him all the time. So he's got to get something in the intermediate range, kind of like what you yeah. saw from Sexton tonight, you know, in the mid range, stop and pop yeah. a little bit of a pull up yeah. and kind of master that. Because, like I said, sometimes when, when he tries to bully ball and he gets stuck, he ends up just throwing the ball, you know, somewhere. Yeah. And, and it, it led to a lot of turnovers. It led to a lot of yeah. turnovers tonight. So he, he's got to be very careful with that for sure. Uh, definitely. And I think also, that. I think also he lets nerves and anxiousness get get the best of him. You see, a lot of the times he rushes shots. He doesn't really make shots with consistent focus. He doesn't really narrow in. But that just goes back to him trying to do something that's outside of his game. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, like I said, to not do things outside of your game until that's part of your game. And for him. Again, going back, attacking the rim, doing what, what is part of his game is better than trying to force something that's not. I'd rather see him, like we've been saying, develop an intermediate shot, work on that long-range shot, and eventually start working that into his game instead of trying to do it into reverse because it's just detrimental to the team overall. Yeah. He was trying to show that work he put it in the summer. He yeah. shot three, <laughs> three point line. He's like, yes, i am got it on my way. Uh, slow down, you. Yeah. You still gotta work in the game a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna work. We're gonna work that in later. 